And we are back now with your health and the confusion over many of those new COVID guidelines that you're facing on everything from the best masks to wear to how long you should quarantine if you're positive. Yeah, this has been a conversation for weeks now. NBC's senior medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres, is here to help us sort it all out this morning. Dr. Torres, we appreciate your being here. Let's start with that confusion and you can try to set the record straight for folks. The CDC is sticking to its guidance that you should quarantine for only five days and don't need a test to leave that quarantine if you've tested positive. Why? And Peter, you're right, and they are sticking to that, and it can be a bit confusing. Hopefully this helps out a little bit. So we're talking of people, about people who either test positive for COVID or think they have COVID symptoms. You want to isolate for five days if you have no symptoms. If you have symptoms, you want to make sure they go away, which means you're fever-free for 24 hours, your symptoms are improving. And then everybody follows that by five days of wearing a mask when you're around others so you can minimize any risk you have of infecting the people that you end up being around. The reason they're saying this is it turns out the majority of SARS-CoV-2 transmissions occur early in the course of the being ill, generally one to two days before symptoms start, two to three days after symptoms start, and so that's that five-day period. But they also say that alternatively, if you can't do the five-day quarantine, they want to make sure that you wear a well-fitting mask anytime you're around anybody for that 10 days. And so again, a lot of issues there, but it can be confusing, but basically five days of quarantining or isolating, and then five days of mask wearing to make sure you don't infect others, Peter. Well, Dr. Torres, let me follow up with you on that final point, mask wearing. I have my KN95 mask right here, but what type of mask should you wear? What are the best kinds to protect you from Omicron? You know, there's a variety of masks and they give you a variety of levels of protection. But overall, the best policy is to wear a mask because any mask is better than no mask. But let's start with cloth masks. These give you the lowest level of protection. They can help protect other people from you. They don't do that good of a job protecting you from other people. So we'll step that up to the next, next one, which are these surgical masks, which I wore for decades in the hospital and still do. Surgical masks, great protection, but they leave some gaps on the side, and so that can be a bit of an issue. So if you put a cloth mask over the surgical mask, it can go ahead and make it fit better. You get more layers, and it gives you a moderate to high level of protection. It gives you pretty good protection. But like you mentioned, these N95s or these KN95s are the best ones for protection, but they don't fit everybody well, especially those with small faces or kids, and they don't always fit all day long because you can be uncomfortable with them and especially for children now you want to make sure that you get one that fits well for them that's very important dr torres let me ask you about those rapid tests if we can right now the first challenge is getting them the second challenge is once you've got it how to use it properly with some real concerns about the effectiveness how accurate they are in sort of identifying if you've had covid or not and some people are now saying you should be swabbing your throat instead of your nose what should we know and the reason they're saying that is because scientists have been saying that Omicron seems to be more in your throat than in your nose, which is true. But you do have to remember these rapid tests. If you look here, a simple nasal swab, these tests are designed to be a nasal swab, not a throat swab. And so we really don't know how well they're going to work for that. It's possible they'll work better and research is going to show that. But it's critical that you follow the instructions to make sure that your test comes out right. Obviously, you know, a rapid test, remember, it's just a snapshot in time to tell you the virus level at that time of testing, frequent testing, meaning doing it two to three times over a 24 to 48 hour period is going to give you a better idea than doing it once. The PCR test is the gold standard, but of course they're hard to get and they do take a long time to get. Yeah, that's why so many people are trying to get a hold of these tests these days. Dr. Torres, thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.